Good morning, everyone. Welcome to welcome to worship this morning. Let's all rise up and lift up our voices and with our opening song, God So Love. Let's all let's all sing out our praises this morning. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. What a wonderful day it is to worship our Lord. I thank you all for joining us here this morning who are here in person in our church, but also those that are joining online. We do have a couple announcements before uh, we continue. Uh, this Saturday is the Braised Steak Dinner. And that'll be from 4 to 6.30 p.m. Uh, you can come in and dine in down in our fellowship hall. Or you can uh, order takeouts if you need takeouts. Uh, uh, contact the church office sometime this week. And uh, we'll be able to uh, get you all 
uh, ordered up. And if you would like to help out with the braised steak dinner, I don't know the times, but sometime on Friday we'll be uh, needing a, a help in the kitchen at what time? At 9 a.m., 9 a.m. So if you can uh, make it at 9 a.m. and help out our, our kitchen staff, uh, it's a big undertaking on our church, and it's a great fundraiser for our church, but it's also a great time of fellowship. Uh, we have a lot of fun uh, pounding those steaks and getting them ready for uh, the meal. Also, uh, the picture day for our directory begins today, and so if you have a last name between A and I think I, is that right? Okay, A and I, today is your day to get your picture for the church directory. Now, don't worry. If you aren't prepared today, you can uh, come really at any, any Sunday to uh, get your church directory picture. Uh, but if you are prepared to get a picture today for the church directory, directory, directory direct after service this morning at 10 a.m., uh, right over here in the chapel, you can see the lights set up and the cameras, and uh, we are going to take pictures uh, and try to put together a church directory. We haven't had one in quite a few years, and we got a lot of new faces around, so uh, please try to participate and be a part of our, our directory. And then finally, uh, we do have a mission focus for the next couple of months, and that is our... Samaritan's Purse Christmas Child Operation, Christmas. Operation Christmas Child Shoe Box. And you get one of these boxes, they're in the back of the sanctuary. If you can see right in the middle window there, there's a big stack of them. And you put this together like so. Find a grown-up to help you put that together. <laughs> and... Uh, you fill that box with toys, and these boxes get shipped out all over the world to children who uh, are in need or don't have a lot of things, and there's some suggestions on things to put into the box. Uh, this is a great mission, so grab your box through the month of October. We do have to collect them early in November, so uh, November the 5th, so we have really just only about a month uh, to get these together. So grab a, grab a box on your way out and participate in, in that mission. And I think that is all the announcements we have this week. Uh, so let us just get back into the service and just prepare our hearts uh, with a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we uh, just thank you so much, Lord, for your son Jesus, who is alive and present in the power of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church in the life of this church, Lord. Uh, through the church, Lord, you uh, give us the salvation story. The, you give us the, the sacraments of your presence. And you also, Lord, give us the support of brothers and sisters, Christian brothers and sisters, all sharing the same life of faith and goal of continually growing closer and closer to you. And for these things, Lord, we are blessed and we are truly thankful this day. Lord God, you also know uh, all of our needs better than we even know them ourselves. Lord, you know us better than we know ourselves. You know the places where our lives are broken. You, um, you see our inward fears, our, our inward doubts. You know the things that are heavy on our hearts. You perceive, Lord, uh, the tender places where healing is needed in our souls. And with this, Lord, we lift up to you those among us who are hurting. Many at this time who are in the hospital, members of our church, Lord, longtime members who are struggling. Uh, you know their names, Lord. You know their situation. And we lift them all up to you, Lord, mentioned as well as those who we may have forgotten, uh, those that are heavy on our hearts, that uh, members of our family and friends who uh, we wish would draw closer to you, Lord. Uh, we lift them all up to you, Lord, and we ask you to just help them all to see themselves as precious children wrapped in your endless grace, 
through all the troubles that they are dealing with in their lives at this very moment. Set them free from anxiety of thinking that they are alone in their struggle and allow them, Lord, to feel your presence and allow all, Lord, who are guided to them to be guided to them for healing and to be guided to them by your power for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. no pretending near in your love oh Lord set me free oh Lord set me free
Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Mia. The scripture readings for today come from all the New Testament. Uh, these are the New Testament scripture of John. John chapter 1, verse 14. John chapter 6, verses 51 through 58. And also 2 Corinthians 10, verses 1 through 6. Beginning in John 1. This is the reading of the Lord. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. And now John 6, verses 51 through 58. I am the living bread who came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. And then finally, 2 Corinthians 10, 1 through 6. I myself, Paul... Appeal to you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. I who am humble when face to face with you, but bold toward you when I am away. I ask that when I am present, I need not show boldness by daring to oppose those who think we are acting according to human standards. Indeed, we live as human beings, but we do not wage war according to human standards. For the weapons of our warfare are not merely human, but they have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every proud obstacle raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to obey Christ. We are ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we lift up this time to you, Lord, uh, this time of word uh, and in gratitude for all your words that you have given to us in this scripture. And we just ask that you take this moment and use my humble words to reflect your glorious word so that our hearts and our souls may be light in darkness, may be truth in the midst of falsity and wisdom in the midst of confusion. Use only your words and not my own in Jesus' name. Amen. It is hard, very hard today to know what truth is anymore. Am I right? Uh, do vaccines, the, the COVID vaccines work or uh, do COVID vaccines not work? Did the masks work or do masks work or didn't they uh, work? Were they riots that happened a couple years ago or were they mostly peaceful protests. What is a woman? What is a, a man? Is that an interchangeable thing or whenever you feel like being one at one time and one at another time, that's, that's okay. Are there more than just two genders, man and woman? Is there other genders? What is the definition of racism? Is it that 
classical definition that we understand of discrimination or prejudice against a, a people based on race, or is it that New Age, Ibram Kendi, UMC uh, definition, which is discrimination and prejudice plus power equals racism? Um, what is uh, a fair election? Was the last election a fair election? Or was it rigged? What did happen on January 6th? Was it domestic terrorists and a, an insurrection? Or was it an inside job designed to disgrace conservatives and patriots? Is critical theory something that is useful? And is it being used in our schools? Or is it just some academic thing that you only hear about in law school uh, in higher levels of education? Do UFOs exist? because the Congress talks about it. Are there UFOs? It's hard to know what truth is anymore, right? Everything I just mentioned, depending on what news agency or, or website you go to, you will find people claiming both sides of these issues as absolute truth. The truth is something that is hard to define these days. It is hard to find, let alone defined, these days. Uh, we are so used to politicians and news outlets telling us things that aren't quite true, or we find out later that they were absolutely false, that they weren't true at all, that we become kind of immune uh, to uh, even thinking that they're kind of telling us the truth, right? We just assume that they're all sort of lying to us in one way or another. Uh, and then we vote or we listen to the only news outlet that we think are lying to us the least. You know, not really that we're getting absolute truth, but maybe that they're just lying to us the least, or at least lying to us in the way that we like to hear, right? That sort of lies. In addition, there's constant scams out there, scam after scam of people that are trying to get over on people. Many people have been called in this church probably on the phone by people falsely representing legitimate companies in order to be tricked into giving vital financial information. Am I right? Many of us have fallen for some of those tricks. I know that has happened to uh, me in the past, uh, and so I know that it's happened to you. Just last week, I was listening to a, uh, a, a news story that said that the FDA said that the common cold medicines that are purchased over the counter, like Sudafed and Benadryl, you know, common cold medicines, that they just don't work, and that they've known about it for years, and that the companies have known about it for years, but they just keep selling it, that it has no real value whatsoever. Now, the Sudafed that you get for a prescription is different than the Sudafed that's over the counter, but the one over the counter apparently doesn't work. Now, who am I supposed to believe? Because I got my doubts about the, 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 the companies, you know, the, the pharmaceutical companies for sure, but I also got my doubts about the FDA as well, right? Because I got to tell you, they approved the COVID vaccine and it didn't vaccine me against COVID in any way or anyone that I knew that got the vaccine. It seemed like every single person ended up with COVID. So who am I to believe? The companies or the FDA? I don't know what is true anymore. I just don't on a lot of these issues. Sometimes I feel like Pontius Pilate asking that question, what is truth? What is truth? So over and over again, the Gospel of John, as I read this morning, uses the words true and truth. Uh, John 1, 9 says that Jesus is the true light that enlightens everyone. Then in verse 14, perhaps the most important verse in John, the author, the author John says, And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. So he's full of truth. 
And then for the third time in just a few short verses, John drives home the point by saying in verse 17 that grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. For John, truth is not something to grasp. It isn't something that's an abstraction that you're just looking for and trying to figure out. For John, it's not something hard to find. It is embodied in Jesus Christ the person. So what does it mean to say that Jesus is truth? Well, theologically, it means that Jesus as the word or the logos, as we would say, is not only divine, but also represents the ultimate truth and wisdom of God. So so Jesus is the truth and wisdom of God in human form. And because of this, through Jesus, we can now know what the truth of God is, the truth about the nature of humanity and the truth about all of our lives and the truth about our ways to find salvation in this life. But more simply put, it just means that Jesus, his life, his teachings, his death, his resurrection, his power and spirit alive through the church and that we are being nourished by through his communion, all of this is woven together to provide for us truth, to provide for us protection, a weapon against all that is full of deceit and confusion and false ideologies. In 2 Corinthians 10, that I just read for you, Paul says this, I'll just read it one more time. I myself, Paul, appeal to you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. I am humble when face to face with you, but bold toward you when I am away. I ask that when I present, that I am present, I need not show boldness by daring to oppose those who think we are acting according to human standards. Indeed, we live as human beings. We all live like human beings but we do not wage war according to human standards. The weapons or the warfare that we have are not nearly human, but of divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy argument and every proud obstacle raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to obey Christ. We are ready to punish every disobedient, disobedience when your obedience is complete. In other words, we are engaged in a warfare that we don't fight with human weapons. We don't fight with human wisdom because what we are facing is too strong. We're facing the world and it's too strong to fight it with our own human reason, right? The image in the Greek language here for stronghold is like one of a great fortress or something made out of granite. You can't pull it down with just simple human ideas. So these fortifications are described in this passage as the logismos, which means ideologies and thoughts and philosophies and psychologies and theories and false religions. They all need to be brought down, it says. But we can't do it with human weapons or human means of thought, but only weapons of the divine nature can bring them down. And then Paul says that we have that weapon and it is Jesus Christ. So to sum it all up, any ideology, any notion, any philosophy, any theory, any religion that is contrary to the word of God, contrary to the truth and the wisdom of God embodied in Jesus Christ is of fallen man and nothing but empty deception. That's all that that means. And what can we use to destroy these strongholds? Well, the weapon that destroys those things, the answer is the truth of Jesus Christ in the pages of scriptures. And we bring the word, the truth, and we measure that against the deceptions of the world. And what doesn't match is false, and what does match is truth. It's as simple as that. Then in chapter 6 in John's Gospel, There is this idea that 
moves beyond just truth embodied in the life of Jesus uh, and the actions of Jesus, but also truth embodied in Jesus physically, which is a, a strange notion for all of us. In the scripture, Jesus declares that his flesh is true food and his blood is true drink. Here Jesus is teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum, so it's, it's a very radical teaching. This teaching continues uh, the feeding of the 5,000 teaching that took place earlier in the chapter, and part of that teaching was tying the sacrament of the Lord's miracle feeding to the manna in the wilderness that sustained the Israelite people after the exodus from Egypt. And for the people of the Exodus, that manna, if you remember that story, that came down and was brought to them every morning, the manna was more than just nourishment. Manna was the assurance that God was present with the people and God's care for them was there. It was God's truth with them, leading them, assuring them that they would be led in the right direction to the promised land. So in his teaching, Jesus is saying that now he embodies God's presence and care and truth, leading us all in the right direction to the promised land of salvation and eternal life. Jesus is the true light. Jesus is full of grace and truth. Jesus' flesh and blood are true food and true drink. Additionally, we of course know that Jesus is from Bethlehem and Bethlehem literally means house of bread. Uh, Jesus professes that he is the bread of life in the scripture too. The bread of God is that which comes down from heaven like the manna and gives life to the world. The bread and the wine that are before you are symbolic of the truth that in Jesus we are spiritually fed and we are all nourishment or nourished uh, for the journey of life that we need to get through. The bread and the juice, like the manna, are assurances of God's presence and care for us. They are a sign, a symbol, and a reality of the truth that Jesus Christ given for us to eat, to lead us on our journeys, is the right and true path. And then finally, the elements before us today are a sign of the truth of God's grace offered to all of us, uh, that we are all invited to come forward. These elements are an outward sign of this inward grace that happens inside our hearts. Grace simply is God's favor upon us and God's favor to us all, no matter how sinful we've been in our lives. Christ died for all of us while we were yet sinners, it says. That's God's favor upon us. That's God's grace. And so we respond to this grace, to the invitation to the table, by immediately confessing our personal sins, trusting that as in John 1, 1 through 9, if we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This outward sign of this inward grace is the confirmation of the truth that God has forgiven your sins. God wouldn't offer his grace if he didn't offer you his forgiveness in return. Jesus is the truth is something that we can hold on to, to protect us, even when nothing else around us makes any kind of sense. If, we, if all we see around us is lies, if things are happening to us that seem to mock God's power, if trusted Christians betray the faith, Jesus is still the truth no matter what. Jesus shows us that our lives are lived for eternal righteousness and not temporary madness that is around us. Jesus' truth helps us discern between the two what is eternally righteous or what is just a temporary thing of the world. So if you're having a hard time knowing what is true, do all the lies in this world drag you down? Do the 
actions of others confuse you? Do things happen that make you wonder if anyone in the world is even looking for truth anymore? Do a lot of things that are called good seem to you to be really arguments and ideologies and beliefs that are not anything you have ever thought would be accepted in the church, even though it seems many of churches accept them now. Uh, If you're feeling this way, don't worry. Don't give in to the confusion or despair or cynicism, because John writes that Jesus says, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood, abide in me, and I in them. Let us eat the true bread and the true wine. Let us abide in Christ, and Christ will abide in us. And because of this, we can have faith that we are heading in the right direction, thinking the right thoughts, discerning what is true and what is of the fallen world. Glory be to the Lord our God, Jesus, the true Christ. Please join me now as we celebrate World Communion Sunday with millions of other Christians throughout the world will be joining in communion this morning just as we are. Let us... Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him. Do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? If you do, say, I do. do. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who earnestly repent of their sins. Do you want forgiven of your sins? If you do, say, I do. 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 Christ our Lord invites to his table all who seek to live in peace with one another. Do you seek to live in peace with your fellow brother and sister? If you do, say, I do. I do. And Christ our Lord invites to his table all who intend to live a holy life. Do you want to live what you believe? If you do, say, I do. I do. Therefore, brothers and sisters, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament for salvation as we confess our sins before God and one another. At this time, go to the Lord. Give over uh, those things that you feel guilty for, those sins in your life. Uh, Confess them to the Lord at this time. Let us pray. In his great mercy, our almighty God has promised forgiveness of sins to all who repent with true faith turn to him. May he have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ our Lord died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you all are forgiven. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, the Lord took the bread and he broke it. He gave thanks to God and then he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, and then he gave it to his disciples, and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us recite together our ancient confession. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the table is now set. Uh, we will all come forward uh, for intinction style. And if you don't remember, we, we've done intinction a few times over the summer. But if you weren't here, uh, intinction is we will all come forward down this aisle at your convenience. We'll exit that aisle. Uh, but also you will take a piece of bread and you will dip it into the cup and then into the mouth. Not bread, mouth, cup. Uh, the other way. <laughs> yeah. um, you're all welcome to come forward. If you, if you can't come forward, uh, just wait at your seat and I will bring the communion around to you uh, after we are all finished. And also there is some gluten-free available. Just let me know if you need that. Uh, so at this time, please come forward.
closing song.
And let us pray. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the love of God, in communion with the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep all of you, now and forever, and unto ages of ages. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Amen.